Glutamine is, an, is a, considered a non-essential amino acid, mainly because the body can synthesize it from sugar, from glucose. You can synthesize glutamine from, from, um, uh, from glucose. It is the most abundant amino acid in our bloodstream. So if you were to go and have an amino acid analysis of your blood, glutamine would be the number one amino acid in, in the blood. Glutamine is essential for the urea cycle. Glutamine is an essential metabolite for our immune system. Glutamine is an essential metabolite for the health and function of our gut. So you need this amino acid, even though they call it a non-essential amino acid, it is absolutely essential for certain physiological systems. Um, but there is no food that you can eat that would deprive you of glutamine, okay, period. Your glutamine, if you don't, your, your body's gonna make it from sugar anyway. But if you, uh, we, we found is water only fasting with uh, exercise will lower blood glutamine levels. You can lower your blood glutamine levels down uh, to a significant degree. Is it low enough to completely deprive the tumor cell, which is an essential necess it's essential for that that uh, cell? You, you can't you got to be careful with it. And this is what we're that's why we pulsing. The pulsing concept means that you just hit it briefly for certain periods of time to just uh, kill off the tumor cells gradually, um, uh, deprive them. So if they're already choked on the glucose side, then you can pulse them on the glutamine side and gradually degrade them slower than you would normally while maintaining the health and, and vitality of your body. Now, it is true that some people who do long-term water-only fasting, like Guy Tannenbaum, and I, I'm getting uh, reports back from several folks who told me that whatever different kinds of cancers they have had uh, completely disappear after long-term repeated water-only fasting uh, and exercise and this kind of thing. And, and that really uh, powers, powers the body. The body will turn on the tumor cells and use them as food. Uh, when you don't eat a lot of food, the body goes through an incredible uh, surveillance, internal surveillance system where every cell in the body now has to carry its own weight and be, be uh, productive for the whole, the good of the whole. The whole, the whole society of cells, all organ systems in the body must be operational at the highest level of efficiency. Tumor cells are not. They're massively inefficient. Uh, they're, they're consumers of energy in a very inefficient way. So when the surveillance system comes, when you put your body under these restricted conditions, internally, they'll go after those tumor cells and destroy them and eat them and just redistribute the fuel in the in the membranes of the tumor cells for the rest of the body so but you have to get into that zone before that happens and um what we find though is when some folks are given standards of care whether it's chemo or radiation blood sugar and goes up through the roof so the body uh is making uh, you're, you're putting when you put your body in stress um emotional or physical stress corticosteroids go up it's a it's a um, a, a fright flight kind of a thing. And uh, that's not good for cancer. Um, so what you, what we, what part of the press pulse therapeutic strategy is stress management as well. Not only are we depriving the, the, the fuels by uh, diet and potentially small drugs that we use to target glutamine, um, but we also reduce emotional stress as part of the uh, overall uh, ability for the body to heal itself. So, uh, um, so all of that plays a role. And, and you know, right now we're the, the most powerful drug uh, for glutamine targeting is 60 oxynorleucine Don. It's been used in the research community for years. Um, it was used on cancer patients years ago. Uh, they said it was too toxic because they gave too high of a dosages under wrong conditions. Uh, without targeting glucose and knowing not knowing how to use the tool they had. They had a powerful tool and they didn't know how to use it. So they took it off the market um, and they gave it to little kids and other cancer patients and things. And some people responded really well. But now we know how to use that tool. And that drug should be absolutely a, a, a part of the cancer therapy cocktail of, of treatments, but it's not. 
Um, and if you try to get it on, on compassionate use, the bureaucracy is just uh, very, very difficult. You got to get state paperwork. You got to get federal paperwork. It's like, oh, people can say, oh, we're going to have you know compassionate use, uh, but it's it's not easy to go through the bureaucracy to get. To get. It's crazy because there's a drug that would have, when used in the right way, uh, could have massive therapeutic benefits. Um, the problem is it went off patent. Nobody can make a buck on it. Yeah. And um, and and so you're left with that. So we have to sacrifice all these poor cancer patients because there's a drug available that they can't get. Um, and it's just it's tragic on all on all levels. 